you know, I'm very particular about my living area and people invading my living area. And, you know, I'm instantly away from people, I'm gone. Flight is what she describes it as, the flight response. The actual events that have happened to you shape your genes, they shape your DNA. And that's what all the research shows. That's what the field of epigenetics has shown. I mean, that's what evolution has shown us, is that the environment will actually mutate a gene. Genes are the code of life, a continuous pathway of one living being to another carrying what has been into what will be. Joe Ballard is a member of the Cherokee Nation. A century after his ancestors were forced to march on the Trail of Tears from their ancestral homelands to what is now Oklahoma, the federal government kicked his grandfather off their family's land again. You know, the little that I do know from, from my dad, which they didn't talk about it much, was they gave him 50, 50 cents an acre and told him to get the hell out, you know. They didn't give him a choice, really. Joe's family was one of 70 Cherokee families whose allotments were taken back when the U.S. government established Camp Gruber in the 1940s. The government came in and took their land on Camp Gruber, Cherokee Wildlife Refuge area, and burned their houses to the ground. Joe's wife, Grace, is a licensed clinical social worker, somatic experiencing practitioner, and the director and owner of Foundation's Behavioral Health. She's worked in the mental health field for 15 years, beginning as an alcohol and drug counselor in Claremore, Grace soon realized traditional methods weren't getting through to her clients, 70% of which were Native American. So she looked to her father-in-law, Larry Ballard, for guidance, who had also helped Grace get that counseling job to begin with. He helped me find the Red Road to Wellbriety, and they just, they, they, it was incredible how much better they got and how much more quickly, and they loved it. Bringing in culture and something that spoke to them and spoke to them in their, in their, in their roots, how quickly that that helped them change and heal. Grace went on to seek out even more decolonized therapy practices, including somatic or body-focused therapy, to help her clients heal from historic shock and complex traumas. Trauma is a loss of relationship. It's a loss of relationship with yourself and with other people. So you lose that relationship with yourself. And what we find with trauma is you're actually losing relationship as well with your own body. Grace opened Foundations Behavioral Health in 2015 to help people heal from the trauma of a colonized society and nature-themed environments. I've heard some healers call it the spirit being scared away from the body, like the shamanistic healers, and you have to bring the, bring the spirit back. And that, a lot of times, is hard for people because we rush around. That's the other reason why people are so disconnected from how much intergenerational trauma has affected them. Drawing inspiration from thought leaders such as Dr. Peter Levine, who teaches that to heal trauma, those broken connections must be restored. During his time with the Hopi tribe in Arizona, Levine learned trauma experienced there is shared pain, remedied as a community as opposed to centering on an individual. And if trauma is not dealt with quickly as a community, its consequences will negatively impact the tribe for seven generations. In the field of epigenetics, there's research in mice where they, you know, they take a mother that's pregnant and they give her a shock with, let's say, maybe a strawberry. And then they measure the offspring with just the strawberry, not the shock. And they have the same reaction their mother did. And that typically happens for five generations, they found, in, in the studies of epigenetics. Um, but we're a lot more complex than a mouse. So for us, it typically, it, it may be seven. Somatic therapy requires people to physically work through their trauma, retraining responses, and even acting out the completion of a traumatic event to heal from it. If there is not a completion of a response to a threat, that it, this, this energy that the nervous system produces in the body has nowhere to go. It just gets stuck and can become what we kind of call as a lay term, a holding pattern in the body. Holding patterns such as strong fight or flight response that live on in those who have experienced relatively trauma-free lives. And other behaviors Joe has observed over the last two decades teaching at Tulsa Public Schools. As far as the Native kids, yeah, they're not as talkative. They're not going to give you as much stuff, you know, and they're, they're, they're particular about their stuff too, which I kind of how I've always been. You know, my stuff's my stuff, stay out of my area. But along with the negative consequences of trauma are some positives. 
Grace says that the strength and resilience of her Native American community members and her family are unlike any she's ever seen. Connecting pathways to improve health. I mean, the past shapes our present and it shapes our future. And completing long-awaited responses for healing.